Well, it's mail bag, and I've got some big packages here, so we'll get stuck into it. We'll do the big ones last, but let's get stuck into these. I'll keep your links down below and give you links for stuff, as always. It's a torch. Now, you can blame Big Clive for this. He featured one of these things recently. I thought, that looks interesting. So, I've got some. Never seem to have enough torches. It's pretty bright, right? You click it multiple times and you can do different modes on it. Or something. I don't know. I have to probably read the instructions again. Or maybe watch Clive's video again. But it's rechargeable. So, you charge it up with a USB micro. But it's got a decent clicky button there, so I needed a new torch for my key ring because my other one was failed. And there's instructions in case you want to read them. Just in case. So that torch has got a few illumination settings. You actually change the brightness stuff on it as well, so you can see a battery life. More suction cups. I think I might got carried away with these. Um, yeah, I think I'll probably do. So the reason I got a bunch of these things is because I had issues with dash cam suction cups failing. So I bought a range of other suction cups which I could potentially harvest parts from, mainly the suction cup because it's on this post which gets pulled up. So having different types and different sizes of the mounts and stuff gives me options for actually getting these things to be replaceable. I've still got some sitting here from before, but these ones here, I've got these ones here which actually, these ones are exactly the right type. I did show these previously in another mailbag. Still got to finish doing that project actually. Um, got one more repair. I have a basis USB C to USB A cable and another one. Probably what size are those? 50 centimeters? Probably less than that, no? 23 centimeters. Got something else in this one here. This is another one, USB-C to USB-A. This is probably 50 centimeters. that one. Oh, I'll have to use raw knife for this one. Perfect. That's basically exactly what I wanted. So we've got an analog voltmeter, analog ammeter, really small, which is actually exactly what I want. I want these quite small profile ones, but analog. So I actually want to make a test jig up. So you've probably seen me doing these electrofusion welder repairs, and I always have this test set up when I'm doing the final testing of them to make sure that they're outputting the correct power and that sort of stuff. And it's a bit mashed together, I suppose. I've got a big load resistor, then I have a multimeter hook clipped on, and then I clip on the, the unit as well. So I actually want to build a test jig, and I've got some faulty fittings, which I can use as connectors to cut the connectors off to make a connection point for the actual welders. And I want to make a little panel with these meters in, so one for measuring voltage, because they can do 100 volts or potentially up to 240 um, and an ammeter as well right so this one's supposed to be that's a 10 amp meter actually we'll get it out there you go this one's a little 10 amp ammeter so normally it should be doing about 5 amps so it's mid scale at 100 volts that's what I should be seeing that's the typical test method I use is 5 amps at 100 volts because it's using a 20 ohm load so I want to set these up so you can see the current and the voltage going through that's the plan. I just need the time to actually build a test jig. A couple of little terminals. This is related to these meters. So these are two millimeter terminals. Come out. Go rubber. That's what we've got. A little screw terminal in there. So you do a wire connection onto it. And it's a two millimeter post. This relates to what I might need doing this project with the test jig. Basically, I want to kind of mount this on a panel, so it's ideally sticking out of a panel. There's another option, anyway, for connections, is I could then plug the wires onto these because the um, things I do testing with the actual welders, they've got a female plug on the end of a cable, 
and I need to be able to plug it in. So I can plug it into here. Have those posts to connect, plug them in. That would be much easier. That's an option. I mean, I've got the actual fittings as well I can use to cut those up and, and make proper connections with those as well. But I thought I'd just have a look at some of these so I can actually get anything out of them. Strangely, in the same packet, we've got another torch. Another Nightcore one, different style. Let's get it out. That one's even brighter. This one's got adjustable brightness on it. Each time you click it, it goes out in brightness. It's pretty bright as well. Wow, yeah. Hold it down and turn it off. I'm a bit dazzled now, I've got bright spots in front of my eyes. I shouldn't have looked at it. <laughs> But it's also a uh, rechargeable one. This one's USB-C rechargeable. You can, like I said before, you can blame Big Clive. He did a feature on a torch. And he got me thinking about them again. Realising that actually I could probably use a couple more. You won't want enough torches. You need to have backup torches. You need a backup for the backup as well. Trust me. More bags, I have to put these things in. So what we've got here, USB-C, USB-C. So I think this is a high current one as well. These are rated at 5 amps, I think. PD fast charging, 5 amp cable, half a meter, yeah. And another one, which I think is the same. So these cables are actually rated at 5 amps. But I don't like to run things to the maximum, but the other part of this. We have some USB-C type connections, which is where I was hitting with this USB-C plug with some flying leads on it. There you go. USB-C plug with nothing but two wires on it. Can it handle 5 amps? I hope so. We'll <laughs> find out. Doesn't actually say it. Another one here, which is different again. This one's different board, different style. It's got a multi-pin connector instead of just a two-pin connector. So I'm not sure if this 2-pin type that's on here is compatible or not, I actually don't know. I think this tile would be safer to use because it's a standard connector. This is probably what I'm going to end up going with. This one here is just a PCB. So this is the same thing, just without the wires attached to it, basically. So it's got data pins on it as well. Space resistor which isn't populated. Now we go to the big packages. And cut through the tape. Come on, I don't use a real knife. It's a cardboard. <laughs> really thick, really chunky padding on the top, right? Top's really well packed. One side is ribble packed. Nothing on the bottom box or the other end. <laughs> Why do people always forget the bottom of the box? The bottom of the box is the most important bit to put the padding on because people drop the boxes. Anyway, typical stupidity. So I bought a couple of these lithium. <laughs> Don't control your sneezing, woman. Dusty post. So what I purchased here is a couple of these lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is in a 7 amp hour format. 7 amp hour cell, actually, right? So these have got these little round cells inside them, and actually only sort of really half full. Um, but they're rated 7 amp hours. Now the only issue with these is that normally these are used in like things like UPSs, which is what I intend to use it in. The problem is, these are a bit limited. Discharge current 7 amps, peak discharge current for 5 seconds is 15 amps. So if you're trying to run these in a UPS, it's likely, well very likely, to overload it. So these do have a BMS inside them, and this is how you actually activate the BMS. This is a really common thing, you just basically apply power to the terminals, and it'll power the BMS, it'll wake it up, because they go into like a sleep mode so they don't drain the battery. So that's quite normal. Well, that's got instructions on the side, it basically tells you apply power to the terminals that will turn it on. That's basically what you really need to know. And like I said, that's the charging information, just charging information just there. So charging information is not really an issue, it's a UPS, it ain't going to be charging a large current, 
a trickle charge, so I'm not really worried about the input charge current. The upper current is what I'm really worried about. Now in my situation, the UPS this is going into only has very light loads on it. It's running like a network switch for Ethernet and a couple of security cameras through PoE or something like that, I think it is. It's actually powering a lot of equipment. There shouldn't be a big load on it. I'm sick of replacing batteries in it because we get a lot of power outages here where I am. Get, you know, weekly we'll get a couple. Sometimes we'll get a couple a day. So they'll be off, you know, for five seconds, come back on again, or maybe go off for ten minutes and come back on again, kind of thing. We get a lot of them. And so I use a lot of UPSs, and so I end up replacing a lot of batteries, and I'm getting kind of sick of replacing batteries. So I was thinking if I can get these little lithium ion phosphate batteries to work in some of the smaller drain devices, then that'd be great. Now I might actually have to go and do external battery packs on some of the other UPSs where they do have larger currents. I might have to get like a a 50 amp hour battery or something like that which can provide a bit more current but for this particular one these might do it I'm gonna try it this is a bit of an experiment I don't think I'll do a video on it you know you're just swapping these batteries in basically it's not particularly exciting it may work it may not if it doesn't work then I've got a couple of lithium batteries sitting around which I have to try and find useful but I don't think that's really gonna be a big deal A spray can. Yes, it had to be sent by dangerous goods and that sort of stuff. And it took ages to get. It took. This came from Wellington, which is mm, I don't know nine-hour drive away. I've used this company before. It's just custom spray paint. So it's just some custom spray paint. It's the first time I actually purchased paint from this company. I've used them before. Normally I go to a, like a local supplier. There's like one not too far away from my work, but it's fifty dollars a can. But mind you, so was this. By the time I paid postage. Anyway. Yeah, this place is in Wellington, I posted it, and it got to Auckland within like two days, I think it was in Auckland. And then a week later, I emailed the courier company saying, why has my package not been delivered? You know, it's sitting in Auckland somewhere, because the tracking said it got to Auckland, and it hasn't been tracked again since then. Anyway, a few days later, it turned up. Anyway, it's just custom paint, this is Mazda 36C. Um, I had to do some minor touch-ups to the car, it's an old car. It was a stepson's car, it needed some repairs, just minor stuff, a bit of touch up here and there, a bit of rust, you know, a bit of paint for that. Not exciting, but that can is 50 bucks. 50 dollars. But then it's custom mix, so yeah. Finally we get to the big package. And it's double boxed, which is great. Well, let's get it out. I'm not too worried about the packaging on this because it is double box and these boxes are usually pretty robust to start with. So yes, it's a new video camera. Finally done it. Got one of these things, 4K video camera. So the camera I'm using right now, this thing is a DSLR. Been using this for years now. I don't know, maybe six or seven years? Must be about that long. Before that I was using an iPhone camera. And uh, I thought, well, I'll get one of these. Now, Ian Scott Johnson uses this camera. So he's actually highly recommended it. He's been very happy with his. And he actually sent me some demonstration video and demonstration footage from his camera so I could see how it performed, which was basically confirming what I wanted to, to see is that it will do what I want from his experience. So I'm hoping this will actually be an improvement. Like I said, I'm using a DSLR right now. Uh, it's a Canon EOS 750D. That's what I've been using for, I say, about six, seven years now, something like that. And it's been okay, I've got a few different lenses for it, but I tend to stick with my one lens which I took a while to settle on, which is an 18 to like 135 or something. That's the lens on this, which kind of does what I want. I would have preferred to go down to like 15 so I can get a wider angle, because that can be a problem sometimes. I've decided to go to a better camera and stop using DSLR. I mean, DSLR's been working okay for me. It took me a long time to get used to it, the DSLR, and actually using that. And as actually initially, I bought it and I thought, well, did I waste some money? Because... I found myself going back to the iPhone camera because the shots looked better, depth of field was better, that kind of thing. Trying to get a depth of field on this camera is really hard. So we'll see what the depth of field and stuff is like on this one. In comparison, hopefully I can get better depth of field and it's all right having that uh, Barker effect and it's all like artistic effects where something's been focused and nice and sharp and the background's all blurred out. But when I'm doing videos like this, I don't want that. I want everything to be in focus. <laughs> So we'll see if this is an improvement or not. I really hope it is because this was two and a half thousand dollars. So hopefully it's an improvement. Yeah. Bit of an investment on the channel. Like I said, all the money I get from the channel goes back into the channel. Right? So the money which my Patreon supporters give me and the YouTube memberships, that kind of stuff. And people just like occasionally click on the thanks button just down there, hint hint. That goes back into the channel. 
all that money buys equipment, it buys things to do videos about. And in this case, two and a half thousand dollars, that's a big chunk of money out of my own pocket to try and do these videos, just to try and upgrade. So, if you want to support the channel, go and check out the Patreon link down below. It'd be helpful. Help pay for this thing. So thanks to my existing Patreon supporters and YouTube members who do contribute to the channel. They actually helped me to buy this in a way. I do appreciate all the people which already support me or have supported me in the past and uh, maybe don't longer support me. You, know, you don't support me forever. You can just sign up. Support me for a few months if you want and then leave again. It's, you know, even a few dollars helps. It all comes together. You know, if I had 100 supporters, it'd be very useful. I don't have anywhere near that. If I had 100 people supporting me on Patreon, that'd be great. So I appreciate all the supporters I already have. Everyone always supports me on Patreon and, and through the YouTube membership stuff. It really is very helpful. So if anyone's ever thinking about maybe supporting me in some way, then please do check out my Patreon link down below. I recommend Patreon over the YouTube one. I actually get more of a cut from that. I get more money from what you contribute. The YouTube cut is a bit less. Also, if you do use Patreon and decide to use Patreon, don't do it through an iPhone app or the iPad app, wherever it is, the Apple apps. Don't do it through that. Go to the Patreon website and do it directly. Don't do it through the iPhone stuff because they take 30%. Straight off the top. Apple takes 30% of what you donate. It costs you 30% more. I still get the final amount, but it costs you 30% more. So what you think you're contributing, you're not. 30% of that goes to Apple. So if you are going to do that, don't do it through the Apple apps. Go straight to the Patreon website and do it directly on there. Time to go and play with my new video camera. Catch you later.